Hey everyone, I'm Sam from Professional Music Technology and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the most common types of microphones that you're going to find both on stage at a gig or in a recording studio setup. To keep things simple, I'll be breaking them down into four main categories. So that's dynamic mics, large diaphragm condenser, small diaphragm condenser, and finally ribbon microphones. We're going to be looking at the pros and cons of each and the kinds of applications that they're most commonly used for. So if you were a little overwhelmed by the huge selection of microphones available, hopefully we can point you in the right direction of which one's most suitable for your particular needs. So first up, we're going to talk about dynamic microphones. No doubt most of you are familiar with mics such as the Shure SM58 and SM57, and these are the type of microphones that you're most likely to find in a live scenario, either at a gig or in a rehearsal room. The reason for this is that they're a lot tougher and less sensitive than the more fragile condenser and ribbon mics that we'll be looking at in a moment, plus they're usually much more affordable. The capsule of a dynamic microphone works kind of like a speaker, but in reverse. So whereas the speaker moves back and forth to push out sound waves, a dynamic microphone features an induction coil suspended in front of a magnet, which moves as it's hit by the pressure of those sound waves coming from whatever you point it at. They are extremely versatile, often seen as a kind of workhorse, jack of all trade microphone for both live and studio work, but they do have certain characteristics that make them particularly suited to the live environment. Firstly, they usually feature quite a directional cardioid or supercardioid polar pickup pattern, meaning that they only really pick up sound from the direction that they're pointed in. And as they're less sensitive than a condenser microphone, they usually need to be placed quite close to your sound source for best results. This all means that they're ideal for live vocals, as they're going to pick up less bleed from other louder instruments on stage. They offer lower levels of handling noise or rumble from vibrations coming up through a mic stand. And most importantly, when compared to a condenser mic, they're much less likely to cause feedback, which is where the sound coming from the PA speakers or monitors gets back into the mic, causing a kind of infinite loop, which results in that horrible ear piercing whistle. Sail, sail away from me, my love. Take my heart in your hand and hold it close. You are always with me wherever I go. Your love is what guides me home. The design of a dynamic mic also means that they naturally handle high sound pressure levels really well. So along with live vocals, mics such as the SE Electronics V7X are also perfect for close micing loud sound sources such as drums, guitar cabinets and brass instruments. <laughs> Dynamic mics are also very popular in the world of podcasting and broadcasting. As you can hear, I've been speaking through the Shure MV7, which is a dynamic mic specifically designed for podcasting. For the same reasons that dynamic mics are great for live work, broadcasters love them as they pick up less background noise. So for example, they're great for recording interviews in noisy environments. Plus, they do offer quite a distinct tonality for speech, which I suppose you could describe as a radio voice. And you'll be able to hear the difference in a moment when I switch over to a condenser mic. Those advantages of a dynamic mic, however, can also sometimes be seen as disadvantages when used in a recording studio, especially when recording either vocals or instruments with a wide dynamic range. Some singers do prefer to use a dynamic mic in the studio. For example, Michael Jackson famously used a Shure SM7 to record all of his vocals on Thriller. But that said, most vocalists recording in the studio will be using a completely different type of microphone. And that's a large diaphragm condenser mic, such as this Lewitt Audio LCT440 that you can hear me talking through now. Now, this type of mic works in a completely different way to a dynamic mic, utilising a large capacitor, which converts acoustic vibrations into an electrical current, hence why they're also sometimes referred to as capacitor microphones. Now, without getting into the science behind it, mainly because I don't really understand it myself, this results in greatly increased sensitivity, a wider frequency and dynamic range, and a smoother, more natural sounding response. So they're gonna pick up and reproduce a lot more of those little intimate details and nuances, especially in a softer vocal performance. 
For these same reasons, they're also often used to record instruments such as acoustic guitars or as ambient room microphones. Hold on before you give up on this. Just know I ain't too good at goodbyes. And love is a hard thing. But I know it's stronger than this And I don't know how long Till I see you again And I don't know how long Till I touch your skin And I won't be the one to say goodbye There are a few things that you do need to consider when you're using a condenser mic, however. Firstly, as I mentioned earlier, they're nowhere near as tough and resilient as a dynamic mic. Those condenser capsules can get damaged pretty easily if the mic gets bashed about. And because of their high sensitivity, they will also pick up a lot more background noise. So you'll usually need to use a shock cradle to reduce rumbling caused by vibrations, a pop shield when recording speech or vocals to stop any of those pesky plosives from your P's and B's, and you'll probably want to turn off anything in the room that's going to cause unwanted noise, such as fans or air conditioners. Condenser mics also require a 48 volt power source, which isn't too much of a problem, as most mixers and audio interfaces do offer this as standard, but it is something worth bearing in mind, especially when you're trying to figure out why your mic's not working. Despite all of this, these type of condenser mics are still really versatile. A lot of them offer multiple pickup patterns, including cardioid, omni and figure eight modes, great for recording multiple voices at the same time. And quite often you'll find features such as pad switches to reduce the sensitivity for use on louder instruments and high pass switches to cut the low end frequencies. Although condenser microphones do tend to be more expensive than dynamic mics, there is a huge range to choose from, starting with great value mics from the likes of Lewitt, SE Electronics and Rode, going right up to high quality tube condenser mics, such as the legendary Neumann U87 or this SE Gemini 2, which offers an incredibly detailed, warm, vintage sounding tone. You don't know me when you hold me and kiss me slowly, it's the sweetest thing And it don't change, if I had it my way You would know that you are You're the coffee that I need in the morning You're the sunshine in the rain when it's pouring Won't you give yourself to me, give it all Moving on Next up, we're looking at small diaphragm condenser microphones, which are sometimes referred to as pencil mics, and they look like this Lewitt Audio LCT-140. Now, these work on the same principle as large diaphragm condenser mics, but as their name implies, they utilize a smaller capsule, making them more compact, very discreet looking, and lighter. Despite their smaller size, these types of mics are incredibly handy microphones to have in your collection. Those smaller diaphragms actually mean that they can follow the sound waves more accurately than a larger diaphragm, and they can offer an extended high frequency response, even beyond that of human hearing. So whilst vocalists love the way that a large diaphragm condenser mic slightly alters the tone of their voice to give it a kind of more professional sounding sheen, technically speaking, a small diaphragm condenser arguably captures a purer, more natural sound, which is why they're commonly used to mic up classical instruments. They also offer a very consistent pickup pattern, and as this makes them ideal for stereo miking applications, they're often supplied in pairs for use as drum overhead mics or for recording acoustic guitars. final type of mic that we're looking at today is the ribbon microphone. This one here is an SE Electronics VR2. 
Now, ribbon technology dates right back to the earliest days of microphones, and unlike the induction coils of dynamic mics or capacitors of condenser mics, they utilise a super thin metal ribbon suspended between the poles of a magnet to capture those sound waves. The result is a very dynamic and accurate sound reproduction, which tends to have a smoother high-end response when compared to a condenser. So as well as offering a warm, almost vintage sounding response for vocals, they're also great for taming harsher treble frequencies from cymbals and brass instruments, and they're commonly used to smooth out the sometimes brittle sound of a guitar speaker cabinet. <laughs> Ribbon mics also offer a lower sensitivity than condenser microphones, so it's not uncommon to see them being used in certain live situations. Plus, their unique design also means that they naturally offer a perfect figure eight pickup pattern, making them pretty versatile when it comes to mic placement options. Unfortunately, all of this does come with a couple of trade-offs. Firstly, a good ribbon microphone doesn't really come cheap, and secondly, even though they are designed to be a little tougher nowadays when compared to older models, these are still the most fragile type of microphone that we're looking at today. So they do really need to be handled with care to prevent that ultra thin ribbon from breaking. One last thing, although some ribbon mics like this SE do feature active circuitry to increase sensitivity, make sure not to accidentally send 48 volt phantom power to a passive ribbon mic as this can cause irreversible damage. And as I mentioned before, these things can be quite pricey to replace. Over rooftops, eight chimneys wide We stand and watch the night Pray to fly, takes flight Waiting for the storms of summer The storms of summertime Oh, break the pressure Go down, sunshine, go down. Go down, sunshine, go. Follow wherever you may go. Your sunshine will carry you home. Go down, sunshine, go down. Go down, sunshine, go. Follow wherever you may go, your sunshine will carry you home. Go down, sunshine, go down. Go down, sunshine, go. Follow wherever you may go, your sunshine will carry you home. Go down, sunshine, go down. Go down, sunshine, go. Follow wherever you may go. Your sunshine will carry you home.
So there we go. Thanks for watching. That was the main differences between dynamic, condenser and ribbon microphones. For more information on any of the mics that we featured here, visit pmtonline.co.uk or you can check out a huge selection of different microphones at your nearest professional music technology store. As usual, don't forget to follow us on all of our socials as PMT House of Rock. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.